Good morning, good morning. Morning, good morning. July 15th, 2020. Welcome to morning prayer. My name is Vincent. I have my son lying here next to me today. And uh, we're going to spend 20, 25, 30 minutes max praying today. But well, let's pray. Um, like I said, my name is Vincent, born in Canada, now living in the U.S. for the last 15 years, and just inviting you into some prayer with us today. Uh, we started this yesterday, uh, a series on prayer and going into prayer, and we're going to be praying on purpose every day. I'll go over um, a principle of prayer, and whether you know a lot about prayer, and are just passionate to be to see the nation change. God have mercy. One scripture. I'm going to read one scripture today, and then, of course, I'll share some other scriptures. So grab your a paper and pen if you like. But um, let me share a couple powerful principles with you, and then we're going to spend some time in prayer. So whether you've been praying a long time, you know everything there is to know about prayer, which that probably doesn't isn't possible but some people might think they do or you're brand new you don't know anything or maybe you just stumbled across this and you're just listening and you don't even know uh, anything about prayer but there's something in you that's hungry to know this is a great place to be we're gonna listen to a principle we're going to learn to pray, and then we're going to practice praying. We're actually going to pray. And prayer actually is not complicated once you know some things. So let's pray to start, and then I want to share a scripture with you, a principle of prayer, and then we're actually going to pray. Father, thank you for this brand new day. What a wonderful day. It's the day that you made. We will be Rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for every single person tuning in today, Lord, whether they're seasoned in prayer, whether they're just stumbling across this, whether they have a hunger to grow. Lord, teach us how to pray. Grow us in prayer and uh, help us to pray as we ought to pray today. Father, I thank you that you're real and that you really do hear us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, good morning, good morning. I want to just say today's a great day. I pray that you're blessed. I pray you know that you wake up in a world where God is big. Hallelujah. I've shared this before, but one time when I woke up in the morning, I heard God say, do you wake up in a world where God is big or do you wake up in a world where the devil is big? And the truth is that God is big and the devil is small. But the devil is, is uh, he likes to make a lot of noise. So we need to stay aware of how big God is and how good God is. Yesterday we started to talk about prayer. And I said, we're putting out a call to prayer. And I'm not the only one. Obviously, I heard it from somebody else. But we're supposed to be praying. And then I talked about a call to the ministry of prayer. And when I say that, I'm not talking about people who feel a special call to ministry. But actually that every Christian should have the ministry of prayer. Ministry means service. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid for all of my sins and all of your sins. And he also paid for our bodies. He paid the price to have a body in the earth. And we are his body. That means we are the mouth that he speaks through. We are the head, the heart that he feels, that he expresses himself through. And he needs his body. He paid a price to have us. And he needs us. The Bible says that the head cannot say to the feet, I have no need of you. So even Jesus, the head of the church, would never say to his body, to any part of his body, that I don't need you. He needs us. And he needs us to pray. So we put out a call to the ministry of prayer, the service of prayer. Prayer is a service that we choose to participate in and to do unto the Lord. Just like when you give an offering, a financial offering, you are making a choice to give something. 
to actually do something. When you serve at church, you're making a choice to get on a schedule and go and be an usher or whatever. That's a service. Same thing, prayer is not a feeling. Prayer is not something that only certain spiritual people are called to. Prayer is a service that every Christian should be participating in. So yesterday we looked at Matthew 6 and Jesus said, when you pray, and then he gave instructions. He didn't say, if you pray, or he didn't say, for those who are called to prayer and give instructions. He said, when you pray. In other words, there was an assumption that we pr would pray. That's normal. Prayer is normal. Prayer is the, a part of the life of Christianity. Um, every Christian should be reading their Bible. Every Christian should be giving financially. Every Christian should be praying. Every Christian should be growing in love and yearning to be led by the Holy Spirit. These are basics of Christianity. And so prayer is a ministry that we do unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And there's a call out to prayer. And so these calls we're doing on purpose. We'll be here about 20 minutes. I don't have long. I have a three-year-old son sitting next to me. But I'm, I'm taking the time that I do have. I want to share and I want to reach out and I want to invite others to pray. Hallelujah. So the principle I want to talk about today is faith. There must be faith when we pray. And that's not complicated. I want to break it down very simply for us. Just the video. You want to go inside? Let's see if you want to Okay, it's very under there. So I did pop one, ma'am. My son's going to go inside. Ready? On your marks, get set, go! Go! Cool. I'm watching you. Run, 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 run! Love you! Go, 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 go! Give me one second. Alrighty, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let's read this. Hebrews 11, verse 6 says, Hebrews 11, verse 6, principle of prayer today. It says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe, number one, that he is, and then number two, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let me read that again. Hebrews 11, verse 6, principle of prayer today. There must be faith. We must pray in faith. And listen, this is going to be simple. This is going to be good today. Don't go anywhere. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So prayer is supposed to be pleasing to God. It's a joy to God and it's a joy to you when you learn how to pray in faith. And faith is something that is alive. The Bible says, actually in this same chapter, verse 1, he said, Now faith is. That sounds like God. God is. He is the great I am. I was, I am, and I am to be. Faith is. Same thing. It's a living thing. So listen, I'm going to share something powerful with you. Faith Without faith, it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, number one. So as we come to prayer, we want to be aware of who he is. We want to be aware that he is who he says he is. That's step number one. Believe that God is. And then step number two, believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is. That's what we want to be coming to the awareness of, number one. God is who he says he is. That's great. And we're going to look at that for a second. It's very powerful, very big. We must believe that he is, number one, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In other words, 
God is real and there are real results available and he wants us to pray in that heart and in that knowledge and in that spirit. Number one, that he is. God, I thank you that you are. We're going to look at Psalm 46 for that. And then that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. What are we doing right now? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're looking at scriptures as we read the word and we look at the word, faith comes. And then we can pray in faith. And that means that we're actually going to have living prayers, prayers that are alive, not dead. Jesus said in Matthew 6, let's go to Matthew 6, that, he's, that, that he doesn't want vain prayers, prayers that are dead. He wants living prayers. So let's take a few minutes, please. Listen to the Word of God. I'm just, going to, I'm just sharing a few minutes, the Word of God. And then we have something living. We have living faith to actually pray living prayers that actually please God and bless God. And they're actually a blessing to us because when you have living prayers, it's a joy to bring them forth. And then that's when you start falling in love with prayer and you can pray in faith. What is faith? Believing that those things which I'm praying, because they're according to His will, that He hears me, and that because He hears me, then I have the things that I'm praying. That's when prayer becomes amazing. Hallelujah. So, prayer principle today. There must be faith. We must be praying in faith. Our scripture is Hebrews 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that He is... And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6. Let me read scriptures to you. Faith comes by hearing. So listen to the word. Jesus said, Matthew 6. When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. They love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. So their praying was just done to be seen by men. Our praying is done to be seen by God. When you pray, you want God to hear. You want to Im you want results from heaven. You're not interested in in men being impressed with your prayers. Amen. <clears throat> Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse six. You, when you pray, go in your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. Remember we said we want to, first we must pray believing that he is. And then that he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. So first step is going into the secret place and praying, making sure we're praying to the Father. Come into the awareness of him and who he is. And oftentimes you can do that by worshiping him, uh, uh, often you can go to the book of Psalms and, and stir yourself up. And remind yourself of who he is. You can listen to f words of faith. Faith filled preaching. That will bring you into the awareness of him. And then once you're aware of him. Then you remind yourself he's a reward of those who seek him. And we're going to hear it from him. And we're going to pray what he says. And then we're going to get results. You when you pray go in your room. When you have shut your door. Pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. Amen. So he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He must believe. God wants us to believe these two things when we come into prayer. Number one, that he is. Who is God? Who is this amazing person that we're coming into the presence of and praying to? He is God Almighty. He is King of Heaven. He is good. He is love. He is happy. He's in a good mood. He's gracious. He wants to pour out his favor. He wants, he's happy to see you. He is king of heaven. He's Lord of lords. There's no one greater than him. There's no one bigger than him. He's alive. He hears us. He's big. He's present. He's everywhere. He's all-knowing. 
He's above every other authority. He's bigger. He's stronger. That's who we're coming into the presence of. And then he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. As we worship him, and then as we bring our, our petitions before him, we can believe that we receive the things that we ask for. Because he is a rewarder. He wants, you heard it from the Bible, Hebrews eleven six. It's not selfish. It's not proud. It's not presumptuous to believe that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The Bible says we must come to him with that kind of faith. So the devil loves for people to be, come into prayer in shame, come into prayer ashamed, come into prayer timid. But the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you might receive grace and mercy to help in time of need. In other words, to receive grace and mercy, you have to come boldly. You don't come ashamed. Now, you don't come in pride either. You don't come in presumption. You honor him. You come in believing that he is. You come into the presence of the holy God. You come into the presence of your maker. You come into the presence of your father. You come into the presence of your master and your, your the a good, good savior. Amen. You don't come in presumptuous and proud and think that you're all that and think that you're better than him. But you do come in bold, believing that he is a good daddy and he loves you and he wants. Because we're not just going in and praying selfish prayers. Let's keep reading scriptures. And then I'm gonna we're gonna pray in a minute. First John chapter five. This is how we pray in faith. First John chapter five, verse fourteen says, This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So I believe that he is. I believe that he can hear me. And I believe that if I ask anything according to His will, what is His will? His will is right here. This is God's will and testament, the Holy Bible, the Word of God. We have a written testimony of His will. If I ask anything according to His will, I know He hears me. And if I know that He hears me, whatever I ask, verse 15, I know that I have the petitions that I've asked of Him. This is believing that God is. He is. He is holy. He is present. He can hear me. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That if I ask anything according to his will, I know that he hears me. And I can have confidence and be assured that I have the things that I ask of him. So this is what we're going to do right now. We're going to do that. But then I'm, so I'm going to teach you how to pray in faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The living word of God, this word is alive. Faith comes by hearing. That's a present continual tense. Jesus said to ask God for your daily bread. That mean, and then he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. God wants to speak to you daily. God is alive today. This is what we come into prayer in, believing that He is now, that He is here now, that He wants to commune with me now. He wants to speak to me today. He wants to show me how to pray today. That's coming into faith. Hallelujah. So I come in in faith, believing that He is, and that He's a reward of those who diligently seek Him. So I know that he hears me because he is. He is who he says he is. He hears me right now. And he loves me right now. And he is present right now. And the things that he gives me to pray are already his will. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. F prayers of faith are prayers that are based on the Word of God and based on what I know God is saying. It's real to me today. It's real right now. 
because I've spent time worshiping him. I'm in his presence and I've gotten his heart and I know what his word says. And so I'm, I know what he wants me to pray and I'm going to pray it and I can know that he hears me and I can believe that I receive it. Hallelujah. So I said, we're not going in to pray selfish prayers. My life is already taken care of. If I have a need, he already knows about it. And he wants me to bring those things to him. You need to bring your needs and your own personal things to him. Amen. But we are, there are also bigger prayers than just praying for ourselves. So let's do that today. Let's first... We're going to take 10 minutes, last 10 minutes. I've already been here 20 minutes exhorting us. Now let's do it. Let's go into the Word. Let's go to Psalm 46. And first come into the awareness that He is. And that who whose presence are we in. And then we're going to pray what He tells us to pray. And uh, there are certain things in the Bible that we know He says to pray. So by the end of this, we will have listened to the word probably for 25 minutes, and then we'll probably pray for five minutes. But then I'm launching you out to, to pray in faith all day long and equipping you to pray in faith forever. But we will have not prayed vain prayers. Someone else might have prayed for 30 minutes or three hours but they're vain prayers because there's no faith because they don't know if God really hears them. They don't know if they believe that God is really that powerful. They don't know if they're praying His will. They don't know if they receive what He's what they're praying. So those are sadly, they're vain prayers. They're dead prayers. They're powerless prayers. They're, they're prayers that are not doing anything. But because we're spending time in the Word, faith is coming. Uh, faith is coming because I'm hearing what God is saying. I have assurance because God told me that He hears me. God promises that if I pray in this pray, in this heart that He's going to hear me. And then we're going to see what the Word says and we're just going to pray His will and it's going to be powerful prayers. So even if it's a five-minute prayer, it's going to be powerful. So I'm teaching how to pray powerful prayers and it actually isn't hard. Number one is we're just going to come into the awareness of Him. So let's do that today. Let me read Psalm 46. You can turn there if you like. I'm going to read it out loud. We're going to come into the awareness of who we're before. And then I'm going to read 1 Timothy 2. Very simple direction He's going to give us to pray. And then we're going to pray. And we're going to know that He hears us. We're going to know we're praying His will. And so we'll be able to believe that we receive what we are asking for. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength. So, Father, as we come to you in prayer today, let's pray. You can, do, you can pray and have the Bible and read at the same time. This is living prayer. Father, thank you that we can come into your presence today. You are a good God. You are a great God. You are a holy God. You are a wonderful God. We love you, love you. I thank you, Father, that we come into your presence. You are almighty King. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is alive. You are in a good mood. Today is the day that you have made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in today. Say that today. Say, I will be glad today. Today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we come into your presence humbly but boldly, worshiping you. Jesus said to come in in this way and say, Our Father which art in heaven, which, which that actually doesn't mean heaven far away. It actually means heaven is as close to your breath. God is right here. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. God, we love you. We love you. You are King of glory. We wake up in a world where God is big. You are big. You are good. And we worship you. We acknowledge you. You said, Jesus, that if we didn't acknowledge you, we didn't praise you, then the rocks and the trees would. We don't want the rocks and the trees to take our place. We praise you. You said in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Today we acknowledge you, God, before we acknowledge what CNN says or what the newspaper says or what Facebook says. We acknowledge you. We worship you. You are bigger than all that. You are bigger than what's going on in the world. You are the Ancient of Days. You are. You forever was and forever will be. And we love you. We love you. We love you. We come into your presence. God is our refuge and strength. A very present 
help in trouble. Thank you that you're very present. You are a daddy and you love us. You're right here with us. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, Lord, whatever happens in the earth, you are with us and you are bigger. You already knew it would happen. You are even more current than the current events. Though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Lord, even if we're in the middle of a hurricane or what feels like an emotional or spiritual hurricane, Right now, we just come into your, we acknowledge your presence. We worship you. We thank you for your goodness, for everything that you did in Jesus in the cross. Paid the price for eternity. Your heart and your will and your desire for the whole earth to be filled with the knowledge of your goodness. We receive abundance of grace today in the free gift of righteousness. I receive your presence today, Lord. I pray for everybody watching, anybody joining today. Lord, may your presence just fill the room. May they become aware of how big you are, how good you are. May the supernatural become real to them today, Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 46, verse 4. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. There is a river. There is something in the unseen realm. There is joy available. Joy unspeakable and full of glory available whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. That's us, the temple of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Thank you, Lord, for your great and precious promises. Thank you that we are strong in you, that the church is strong in you. God, we pray that the church would arise and be who you called her to be. Lord, I pray over this broadcast, I pray you give us a heart for prayer, God. We make a decision. Say, I answer the call to prayer. God, teach me to pray. God, give me a hunger for prayer. God, grow me in prayer. That your church, Lord, would be who you called her to be. You said that the gates of hell would not be able to prevail against your church. So, God, I thank you for your church. I pray for your church. Let's pray for his church today. For the leaders in the church. 1 Timothy 2 is what I referenced. I would look at, but I'll just quote it to you. But he said in 1 Timothy 2, First of all, prayers, supplications, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men and for all those in authority, that we might live peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty. Go read that. 1 Timothy chapter 2. If you don't know how to pray or what to pray, the Word will tell you. 1 Timothy 2 is what we're praying right now. And what we're going to pray for those in authority in our nation. But right now I'm praying for the church. Those in authority in the church. The church, Matthew 16, Jesus said he would build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church is the most powerful entity in the earth. And we're not here to lord over anybody or think we're better than anybody. We're here to bless the world. So that's not a proud statement. We're here to destroy the works of the devil. We're the ones with the authority to shut down the, the works of the devil. We're here. We're the pillar of the truth. So let's pray for the church. The church needs to arise. Father, we pray for your church. We pray for your leaders, your apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers around the world. In this nation, Lord, those that you've given authority, those that you've given place, Lord, thank you that they know your voice, the voice of another they'll not follow. Lord, give them utterance to boldly make known the mysteries of Christ. Give them boldness to stand up and declare the word of truth. Show them, Lord, how what to do. Pray for your local pastors, Lord, local churches. Here in Florida, across the United States and around the world, Lord, in this time, give them wisdom, Lord. May they not shut down. May they not back down, Lord. May they advance. May a spirit of advancement come upon them, Lord. May they rise up and be who you call them to be, Lord. Do what you call us to do, Lord. Proclaim your word. Step out. Reach out. Bless people. Equip people. And then may the saints arise, Lord. May the saints arise in who they are, God. Called to do. Lay people. Just regular, quote unquote regular. There's no regular Christian. We're all supernatural. But I just speak. We pray for, the, for every single Christian, Lord. To rise up in their neighborhoods. Rise up. Lead Bible studies. Lead people to Jesus. Proclaim the word. Preach. Pray. Cast out devils. We pray for a great awakening. 
That's all just praying. That's just, we just made ourselves aware of God. And then we started to read this scripture and then all these prayers start coming out. Psalm 46, we're reading. Verse 6, the nations raged, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. We're going to be done in three minutes. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Did you hear it? The Lord of hosts is with us. So Hebrews 11, 6, this is our prayer principle for today. We must pray in faith, believing, number one, that he is. He is what? The Lord of hosts is with us. Hosts is the heavenlies. Hosts means he's the God of every, he's above. He's the God of the heavens. He is with us. We must believe that he is. He is the God of the heavens. He is the God eternal. But then he also is who he says he is and would do what he said he would do. And he said he is with us. The Lord of hosts is with us. Thank you, God Almighty, that you're with us, even as we pray. That we don't pray in our own authority. We pray in the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow, every tongue will, will confess that he's Lord. God, we thank you that we have prayers that prevail. That these are effectual, fervent prayers because they're in line with your word. May we pray your word, God. May we pray in your authority, God. Give us prayers, Lord. Show us how to pray. Give us prayer strategies, Lord. I pray. Touch lives, Lord. Teach people to pray. Draw people to pray. Show them how to pray, what to pray. <clears throat> Come. Verse 8. Behold the works of the Lord, who's made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So first step is coming into the awareness that He is. And He is God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God, I thank you that you are. God, God, I thank you that you are. Father, I pray for myself and I pray for anybody and everybody listening. Flood our beings with the awareness of you. Make yourself more real to us than ever before. And we just choose. You need to obey this scripture. He said, be still and know that I am God. That means turn off the TV, shut everything else out, and take some time to be still. Even if it's one minute, be still. Fix your eyes on Him. Fix your heart on Him. Believe that He is. That's step number one. And then He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Father, thank You that You're good. Thank You, thank You, thank You that You're good. Thank You that You're real. And thank You You're a rewarder of those who diligently seek You. God, we desire to see uh, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for the nations today. We pray for this generation and the generations to come. Father, I thank you that we can pray in faith, believing that we receive what you said to pray. That these things that you give us to pray are your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So much more to go into today uh, than, than we did. This is just basics. Just one little thing at a time. But today we're learning. First, come into the awareness that he is. And that he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Let's finish by praying what I already prayed a little bit. But for this nation, for our nations, wherever you're from, for the globe, for a great awakening, a returning to God. If that's your heart, then know that that is God's heart. It's in the Bible that people would be saved. It's his heart that all would come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. That is his heart. That's first uh, that's um, 2 Peter chapter 3, that's 1 Timothy 2, that all would come to the knowledge of the truth, that all would be saved. That's what he's waiting for. So let's pray that simple prayer. But even if it's just a one minute prayer, because you know he is God and you know he hears you, then you can believe that we receive it. So Father, we pray your heart. Father, have your way in all the earth. Have your way in our lives, Lord. Teach, continue to teach us to pray. Continue to move in our lives, Lord. Continue to touch our lives, Lord. Continue to mold and form us, Lord. And then give us a heart to pray for people, Father. And I thank you that as we do, as we labor in prayer, and then we labor by going out and doing whatever you give us to do, that we can believe that you are moving in the earth 
Lives are being touched. Your gospel is advancing. People are being saved. And thank you that we can have a part in it, God. Have your way in this earth. May your gospel go forth. May there be a great awakening. May the works of the devil be destroyed. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to share this broadcast. I invite you to follow us here on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, wherever you found us. Uh, our heart and desire is to get words of faith words that are going to equip people, mobilize people, reach people, touch people, empower people to touch other people to the ends of the earth. So I'd love for you to subscribe, follow, but also share this, invite other people to subscribe and share so that uh, just helping us get the word of God to other people. All right. love you. Bless you. Have an awesome day today.